Hello everyone and welcome to Python Scientific Computing Tutorials. In this tutorial we explain how to define complex numbers in Python and how to perform operations on complex numbers in Python. But before I start with explanations I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's first import the necessary libraries. I will be using these two libraries. I'll be using NumPy and I will be using CMAT. CMAT is a library for performing operations on complex numbers. There are several methods and approaches for defining complex numbers in Python. For example, let us assume that we are given this complex number. Z is equal to 3 plus 2J, where J is the imaginary unit. Keep in mind that in Python we use J to denote imaginary units. Let's define this number. It's super easy. We'll simply write z is equal to 3 plus 2j. Note over here that we don't have a multiplication sign between 2 and j. This is very important. And let's print it out. Let me erase first this part. OK, let's see the output. Here it is, 3 plus 2j. That was the first approach. Another approach is to use the function complex. Let's use this function. I will define a new number, z2 will be equal to complex, and over here I will specify two arguments. The first argument is the real part, and the second argument is the imaginary part of the complex number. Here it is. Let's print it out, and let's now compare our two numbers. How can we do that? Well, I will simply type something like this, print z, double equality sign, z2, and let's see the output. Perfect, true, so the complex numbers z and z2 are equal. Next, let's learn how to compute a conjugate of a complex number. So here's a complex number, and let's compute the conjugate. It's super easy. We will simply type z dot conjugate. And here it is. And let's print it out. Okay, let's see the output. Here it is. 1 minus j. Next, let's learn how to perform basic operations on complex numbers. Let's do that. Let's define complex numbers. For example, z1 will be equal to 1 plus 2j, z2 will be equal to 3 minus 2j, and let's define z3 that's equal to, for example, 2 plus 10j. Okay, so let's define now z4 to be equal to z1 plus z2, and let's print z4. Let's see the output. Okay, let's see, is this correct? 1 plus 3 is 4, perfect. 2 minus 2 is 0. That's correct. Okay, then you can multiply complex numbers like this. For example, z5 is z1 times z2. You can see that this operator is overloaded, and this is very important. The multipl multiplication operator is overloaded. Let's see, z5, here it is, simple as that. Okay, we can also divide complex numbers, for example, z6 is z1 divided by z2, and let's print z6. You can easily verify that these expressions are correct. Then, we can also compute various expressions. For example, if you have a paper and you want to verify its results and you see a complex uh, expression, you can verify it very easily. For example, let's try to verify something like this. 2 plus 1j, and let this be conjugate, and let this be multiplied by, for example, times 2j. And it's a complex number, let's call it z7, and let's print out z7. Here it is. Perfect. 
we can easily compute exponents of complex numbers. For example, z8 should be an exponent of this complex number, 2 plus 5j, and let's compute, for example, the fourth power. This is how we do it. Super easy. And let's now print the result. Here it is. Perfect. Next, let's learn how to compute the magnitude and the phase of a complex number. Let's revise the basic ideas. We can represent complex numbers that have this form, a plus bj, in the complex plane. Over here, we place the real part of z, and over here, that is on the vertical axis, we place the imaginary part of z. Then, our complex number is actually a point in this complex plane with the projections onto horizontal and vertical axes that are equal to A and B. That is, equal to the real part and to the imaginary part. This distance, that is the distance from here to here, and let me change the color so you can see it a little bit better. This distance over here is usually denoted like this, and it's called the modulus. And obviously the modulus is the square root of a square plus b square. Now, another important quantity that completely defines the complex number is the phase or the argument of the complex number. Usually it's denoted by phi. And the phi is arcus tan 2 of these two projections, A and B. Be careful over here, it's not arc tan, it's arc tan 2. It would be arcus tangent only if the complex number is in this first quadrant. Okay, so let's define a complex number for which we can easily compute the modulus or this radius over here. For example, this complex number obviously has magnitude equal to phi. And let's compute this magnitude. To compute the magnitude, we will use the function absolute. And this is the standard Python function and it's overloaded in the case of complex numbers. So let's see what will happen if we type something like this. We should get 5 as the result. And you can see over here that we actually obtain 5. Perfect. How about the phase? Well, to compute the phase, we need to use the CMAT function phase. So let's compute the phase of this complex number. To do that, we'll type CMAT dot and then we will call phase and then we will specify our complex number and let's now define this variable i will call it phase one is equal to this and i will simply print the phase one okay so let's see the result and here it is note over here that the phase is angle however it is expressed in radians Let's verify that this is actually the correct phase by using the arctan function. To do that, we will simply type print, then I will call numpy function arctan2, I will specify the imaginary part, comma, real part, and let's see the result. And here it is. The results are equal. Next, let's learn how to convert complex numbers from polar to rectangular forms. So let's use this complex number as an example. And let's convert this complex number into the polar form. To do that, we will use the function from the cmat.polar. And we will specify the number. And let's assign the result to g. Let's see what's happening over here. Okay, and let's see g over here. Aha, uh -huh, it's a tuple. This function converts the rectangular form 
of the complex number into the polar form. The results is a tuple where this first entry of the tuple is the magnitude and the second entry is the phase. Perfect. We can also verify that these expressions are correct. Now, let's do something else. Let's now convert from the polar form into the rectangular form. So to do that, we will type Z3 is cmath.rect and over here we need to specify the magnitude and the phase, and we will simply specify G. And let's see the output. Aha! Uh -huh. Got two arguments, expected one. And this is the issue. So basically, we need to decompose this tuple. So we need to type something like this and something like this. Okay, now let's see the output. Here is Z3. And let's compare Z3 and Z4. We can see that they are almost the same. And this, there is a very, very small error due to the conversion. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you liked this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.